Welcome my fellow Gen Zers, this YouTube video is a safe space from all of those millennials. And if you're born 1995 before, I'm going to kindly ask you to leave the video because this place requires an ID card to enter. McLovin? Yeah, you're allowed in. I never thought I'd be doing these skits, but it is peak comedy. I'm so sorry you guys have to see that, but if you haven't, please don't super bad. Hey, what's going on guys? Hey, and I'm on a journey to educate millions of people just like you on personal finance. Make sure to leave a like on this video and please subscribe or actually don't if you don't watch my cringy skits. But seriously guys, little tips and tricks I want to show you in this video are really essential to learn as young as possible in order to allow the compound effect to have as much time to grow. And of course, this is not financial advice. I'm just a mere child on the internet making YouTube videos on personal finance. Lesson one is leveraging time. And I just want to quickly get out of the way because I've already spoken on the channel before about this concept, but teenagers must understand that the leverage of time that they have at such a young age can really allow the compound effect to grow as soon as possible. They should build investments that produce decent returns of a sustained period of time rather than chase the quick returns. This factor is one of the major mistakes that young people like me make at such a young age, as we see everything as a get rich quick scheme because we want to make as much money as possible while we are young. However, as I said before, most young people should build a strong portfolio of ETFs as the leverage you earn at such a young age is essential to get good returns. Lesson two is learning from the experienced. And this includes listening to podcasts, reading books, and watching handsome young finance YouTubers. Oh, come on. Or however you learn best, but personally, I love to listen to podcasts as I can divert my attention to do other things such as study, work out, chill, or edit these videos. And some of the podcasts that I highly recommend include The Ice Coffee Hour with Graham Stephan and another handsome YouTuber, Jack Selby. Okay, may I need to rename this video How to Be Sus for Teenagers. Anyway, other podcasts include The Game with Alex Homozzi and Like Father, Like Son with Marcus and Curtis Tilbury. Marcus. It's Mark. Mark and Curtis Tilbury. These business minds and YouTubers can project their ideas really, really well to the audience, as well as having a bit of fun, so I highly recommend them. Lesson three is knowing what you're worth, and to be honest, it's not much. Most teenage part-time workers can only make 10 to $25 an hour at most. So we'll know scale up our income and what our time is worth. We must practice our personal skills, including communication, leadership, problem solving, management, and many other specialized skills, but those are some of the general ones that everyone should know. And then we can apply those skills and get a more sought after job, maybe to start a business or gain some work experience with a career you wanna build for yourself and want to live out your life in. And that's how you can scale your income and leverage your time, as I said earlier. Lesson four is find your passion. And it may sound cliche, but discovering something you love and can earn a reasonable income doing will make your life 10 times more enjoyable. Sorry guys, a bit of gold digger doesn't count. Big brain joke there. So try everything, whether it's film, music, sports, whatever it is, any hobby you can find. I'm sure you can monetize your hobby through media platforms such as YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitch. And the other app that those old millennials use, I think it's face, Facebook. Don't think some degree in college or university that you hate can be the rest of your life. Don't skip out on your passion. Please enjoy something that is much more fulfilling to you. And it may take until you're 40 to find that passion, but please keep investing in yourself. Because when you look back at your life when you're 80, you'll thank yourself for it. Yes, I know this video is titled about teenagers, but lesson five is working hard in your 20s. The reason I emphasize this is because I recently saw an Alex Homozy tweet that the average male lifespan is 75.1 years, so you're effectively middle aged in your 30s. And for females, it's slightly higher, but that's not the point. But the point is to stop delaying or putting off those ideas you have in your 20s. You need to make that jump as early as possible, or else you won't be able to escape the rat race of the middle class. So, yeah, manifest these goals as much as you can, the process, whatever but you really have to act on all these ideas you have as soon as possible. And some people don't realize this, but two people are gonna have the exact same goal. Let's say you've been an NBA player. So one, wakes up every morning at 5 a.m., works out, trains hard in order to accomplish his dreams, whilst the other just plays a weekly Saturday game or school game or whatever game it is, just one he's assigned to do. Now in the short term, both acquire the same skills. In the long term, you realize this, the player gets further and further ahead and they become NBA players like LeBron, KD, Michael Jordan, Kobe, whoever. Whilst the other never made it past domestic level and is now working a job he hates. So that analogy is really important to identify the difference between the elite and those stuck in the right race. And lesson six is avoiding lifestyle inflation. 
Unfortunately, most young people don't think of their finances past Friday as they work full time to pay for the weekend full time. And they think that saving a little bit every week is the answer to all their problems, but honestly, everyone should know by now investing is the answer. The full definition of lifestyle inflation is someone in their 20s who make 30 grand a year at most and decide to buy a $50,000 car because they saved up for it, along with spending $200 a week on takeaway. Then they get a big promotion at 30 to make 60 grand a year and they think they have all the money in the world. So they think they can afford a big house relative to the income that's worth 700 grand with a $20,000 deposit. And then this person has regular shopping sprees for designer clothes that look the same as Target clothes and that amounts to about 100 bucks a week. Oh, and then at 40, they get another promotion to 100 grand, which is a lot more. But then they spend $1,000 a week on restaurants and clubs. And then they finally reach 50 and have no money in their bank account. However, if they didn't actually react to all this growing income, they'd have a lot more money and be retired well into their 30s or 40s. Trust me, I did the maths. And although they're not the most realistic numbers in the world, I think you get the point. Have a long-term outlook for your money and you'll be better off for it. Lesson seven is to build your retirement account. Now there's so many names for this, but in the US it's Roth IRAs for retirement accounts and here in Australia it's superannuation. Now this is a tax advantage account that lets you slowly build your wealth as you go along throughout your years, which basically means rather than stocks after you sell it, you have to pay tax on. You actually pay taxes when you buy the stock, which at first doesn't sound good, but again, long-term outlook is a great idea to focus on. Because instead, when you pull your money out, it comes out tax-free, and this is because of the compound effect that I talked about with my ETFs. This may not sound as good as the traditional route because you have to pay taxes up front, but trust me, mathematically, it is proven, that's why everyone has to do it. Your corporation or the business you work for then have to put 10% of your income into your superannuation. And you can also contribute to yourself up to $27,500 a year along with your employer at 15% tax rate. Although this deposit limit applies to those making less than 250 grand a year, as those making above get taxed at a higher rate of around 30%. Now for the average person, this is the greatest investment you can make because if you actually max out your $27,500 every year, the money accumulates without you even realizing. However, you cannot withdraw this money until you reach the preservation age which is roughly at 65 when most people retire. However, personally, I want to accelerate my wealth and have full access to it, as I want to retire earlier, so I don't focus on it as much, but it is really important, trust me. And as I said earlier, the average male lives at 75, so why wait until he's 65 to enjoy the money you've earned? And lesson eight is just to enjoy your younger years. And I may sound like a grumpy old man just telling you what not to do, or else you have a terrible life, but I am still only 19, of course, and you still have to have fun making friends, building relationships, doing your hobbies, playing sports, whatever it is, but you still have to have a work-life balance where you can pursue your career. Try to do stuff on your bucket list all in your younger years so when you settle down and build a family, you don't have to have all the responsibilities when you settle down. God, children, such a burden. Am I joking? Or am I? Make sure to do something every week where you can just relax, have fun, and enjoy life. Which for me is Sunday's Men's League Basketball, where we just lost by 94 points. Yeah. I had fun, trust me. Anyway guys, thanks for tuning in to what teenagers should know. Coming from a teenager myself, click onto my last video, yep, right there, and what it takes to become the 1%. And don't forget to like and subscribe as I'm trying to get my message out to as many people as possible. So you supporting the channel will contribute to the mission. Lower my socials, and anyway guys, heading out.